morning all. It is May 29th, so Sunday May 29th, we're almost in June, and I've just grabbed my morning cuppa, and I thought I would do a quick tour, quick unedited tour, just spontaneous off the garden and what I'm up to. Um, so I'm going to start with probably my newest border, which is behind me here. So it is quite empty at the moment, you can kind of see I'm sort of working on it, um, in and out. Um, I've stuck some cannas in just for the summertime, uh, just to fill up some gaps. And uh, I've got a boxwood ball in there for some evergreen structure. And then behind there is a witch hazel. Uh, Arnold's Promise is the variety of that one. And I'm planning to get two more actually, so I want to put one down on this lower end and one kind of up in that sort of top side. Um, the idea for this border is going to be a winter border. Um, so ideally it's only going to be winter plants or anything I suppose from late October through to mid-March I think is kind of the time frame of seasonality. I'm going to pitch for this border. So yeah what I just love Ideally, I suppose, about winter gardens or winter spaces is you're taking the time of year where there's low light levels. Um, you're doing the best you can, sort of with stem colour, maybe with sort of conifer colour. There is some flora in winter, but obviously not that much. And then your evergreen structure, and you're just kind of making something that's colourful in a time of year, obviously, where there's not much interest. Um, so, winter gardens are a skillful enough process, I think, to capture. If, you know, once they're done well, they're done well, it's like anything. But um, I think it's easy just to put in the cliche obvious items. So I'm trying to, I'm gonna be working on that. Maybe that might be a couple of years projects. And then I'll spin the camera around here. So this is my favorite vista coming across the garden. I love walking from there across. It's a great vista. Uh, so this is my long border, it's approximately 32 metres of border, goes the whole way to the bottom there. And I'm working on a new colour theme this year, um, it's never been themed before. This was my trial and error bed when I was a teenager, so when I got into gardening this was kind of the first border I ever worked on. And I spent a lot of time, um, autumn 2021, actually removing a lot of plants from it. Um, just because nothing matched, there was no theme as such. So. I'm at that point now where I want to get this sort of themed and a wee bit more organised. Um, I'm going to keep the alley and purple sensation in because it just does fantastic. There's this beech tree about a quarter of the way down the border. And yeah, you can see these alliums. Um, they just do a fantastic job in this dry shade underneath a beech tree. Um, beech trees just absorb a lot of moisture out of the ground, so they're doing really well. Um, so although they're not blue, um, I might sort of twist the theme that it'll be blue, white, silver, purple and yellow. Um, so yeah, we'll go from there and then cross the drive. It's all of our avenue oaks, so they frame the driveway either side. And I had been uh, trimming the hay just on the internal side through the week there, so hence why this is here. Oh look! My coral poppy has finally opened. I've been waiting for days for these to open and obviously it has just opened there yesterday evening. So that looks stunning. There's no colour on earth like a coral poppy. It just is the most exquisite colour, shape, uh, just, I'm astonished by them every time they flower, they just, they look like nothing else. In my opinion, a coral poppy is one of the best things you could have in a garden. Um, so what's in this border? This originally was the white border, uh, so there used to be lots of white in here, 
and I'm changing the colour palette to uh, gold, purple, silver, white and orange and there's some uh, cow parsley in here which will maybe freak some people out but what I do is once the flower is starting to go over I just cut it down to the ground and then it can't reseed so if you do want to incorporate cow parsley in your garden it is possible just remove the flowers um, once they get to the end of their season it will not reseed it will not spread anymore um, I've just kept this little bit in much to my mother's disappointment but I love cow parsley I think I think it's fantastic I don't understand people's dislike for it um, yes it grows in our hedgerows but there's nothing wrong with that it's the month of May cow parsley looks fantastic during May And then uh, yesterday evening I just cut all my heliboards back as well. So now is a good time if you want to cut heliboards. It doesn't do them any harm, just flatten them. Um, it just, it's cleared more space here um, and underneath this area here. And it just uh, allows me then to plant other items in there. And um, yeah, uh, the heliboards, they'll, they'll bounce back so it's, it's not the end of the world. So the theme colour-wise is getting more strong on this side. So you can see it's starting to come through. You can see the silver there from the Senecio. You can see the orange from the Nohofna. Uh, we've got lupins, blue lupins in here. Um, I've got lots of Arisia on one of my favourite plants. I've never done talking about it. Uh, more Allium purple sensation. Uh, honestly, if you're looking for Alliums and I don't know, you're trying to be more thrifty, don't panic about the nicer, fancy varieties. Honestly, Purple Sensation does a good job. Okay, it's not as big as other Alliums. It's a wee bit more compact. But for a really strong punch of purple, uh, Purple Sensation will do your job. Um, and it reseeds. And honestly, it religiously comes back time and time again. I've never had any trouble with it. I love it. Uh, my Magnolia Symbondii is flowering for the first time, like ever, it's never flowered before, so that's happening. And then we'll keep going on around, I'll show you some more. This Jerusalem Sage had got quite big and it got quite close to the front, and actually I'm still going to move this piece out, it's getting quite large for the space. Um, Jerusalem Sage is fantastic as it flowers on these sort of squarey stems and has all these wee uh, clusters of flowers that I haven't flowered yet. But yeah, they'll be flowering very soon as we are almost in June. And then I'm going to keep this colour theme going right round. Um, nice purple bodley here. And I've cleared the trunks at the bottom. Um, I want to sort of see it as a multi-stem tree, even though it's a shrub. Um, so that's something I'm trialling and I'm also going to do the same with this Bodleia globosa. I just haven't got around to doing it yet but I'm going to clear these stems down so it looks like that one um, so you can kind of see the naked branches and I want all the growth up there on the top I want it really tall because um, this is the lowest part of my garden so when I am up uh, way on that side I'm going to be able to see over and see it I don't want it low and compact um, so I, I want some things really high up. So that'll be good when that gets sorted. Um, this wee area in here, I wouldn't say it's a problematic area, but it's something I can't really do that much with. Um, thankfully, the digitalis there, the foxgloves, just do a really good job of filling in the gaps. Um, in the winter time then, this is all yellow cornice, which I've cut down now for this year, so that's it there. So it's cut down for now, but that'll be back up again by the end of August. And then once autumn hits, the leaves will be off and it'll be nice yellow stems. Uh, behind me is the pond and that's what I'm going to be doing today. Hopefully all the water is out of the pond and I'm going to hopefully get some time to thin all these reeds out because they're getting really invasive now. So that's going to be done. And then the bees. I've got so many bees this year. I have to stand really still when I'm near them. Last year's bees were a bit more friendly. This year's bees are quite active. So 
so it's learning to work with them. Um, but yeah, this is one of my also new borders. Uh, I'll stand here just. Uh, so this is going to be like a hot border, I think. So kind of like lots of lovely hot colours in there um, is is what I really is what I want to do with this. And then sort of on this side, closer to the beehives, I've tried to make a wall of day lilies. It's like a hedge of day lilies, maybe. That's, I know that sounds ridiculous, but um, I'm going to tidy up this area closer to the bees and plant plants in there on the on the lower side that if we need to work with them if we need to access the hives if we trample over the plants it's not the end of the world so probably like acamella or something plants that i'm not too caring about but it'll just fill that bareness of the soil and then beyond the hermicallus hedge then will be all the warm flora um so really nice warm colors there's a really nice red persicaria in there there's some orange geums uh, there's two miscanthus there's the remaining Jerusalem sage that I lifted from down below. Um, what else is in there? Papaviar, so there's um, red, the red poppies. Um, some sunflowers. And uh, calendula, the calendula uh, down at the bottom there. And then behind me, uh, this used to be my cut winter stem garden. I started working on this last uh, winter. Um, I haven't really got a theme as such, I think, for this area. Um, it's kind of going to be maybe pastel -y colours, I don't know. Um, there's some yellow in there, there's some blue, uh, there's some pink. Uh, what else is in there? Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's the colours at the moment. A wee bit of white, there'll be some lilies flowering later in the year, it'll be white. And yeah, just ignore, I pots and stuff lying everywhere. I was planting this last night because the bees are so active through the day now. Um, I have to plant at night time. Um, I got lots of these tall pots um, at the uh, Antrim Castle Gardens. Um, I was helping Paul and Dermot um, do the show garden there. So thank you Dermot if you're watching. Those pots are really handy. Um, it's quite difficult at the moment to source uh, taller plastic pots. Uh, so those came in useful for repotting. Behind me then, on the upper half, we have the log wall. Then it comes down into the stones. And then this is the, what I call level two of the garden. So there's two circular lawns on this level. And uh, another planting bed here behind. Uh, this is where the eucalyptus tree was. And I got that ripped out yesterday, um, which was really sad, but I have replaced it with another Bachelor Jack Monte Eye. So that'll mean there's three Bachelor Jack Monte Eyes now on this level. Um, so it's a wee bit behind, but hopefully it'll catch up soon. And then that will tie in with the two that are both centered in both circles, um, which I think will work in quite well because then uh, way down, oh my goodness, there. Way down at the bottom where my other border is around the pond, there's another Bachelor Jack Monte Eye. So it'll kind of group them all. Um, together and the stone steps we have the fox and cubs uh, it'll be coming into flower hopefully through June and July um, so it'll be quite cool I can see there's some buds on it there so yeah that's happening and yeah that's really it nothing overly else exciting to show or talk about um, this border up here, Project Ryan, is doing really well. So at the moment all the GMs there are in flower. The uh, Stippa Gold Notes is starting to produce some seed heads. Uh, the Bluebells are in there at the back underneath the Acer, they're doing really well. And there's a couple of big coral poppies there that are about to come out and flower. And yeah, that's where I'm at at the end of May, coming into June. Um, would have liked some things further forward, but it is what it is. The weather's been just really unpredictable at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep working with it and I will keep the updates coming. Thank you as always for watching. Bye.